If you have access to rule sets, you can use these in order to automate pay conditions. The rule sets page can be found via the payroll settings tab, which is accessed here or here. Once there, you'll need to select the award from the drop down menu at the top of the page if you are using awards. I'm going to select the rule set from my hospitality award today. There are a few settings to be aware of within rule sets that have the potential to change the results of how timesheets are interpreted. To clarify, a rule set is a group of rules that combine to form a rule set. Each rule set can then be linked to an employee via their employee file pay on defaults page. Employees can only be linked to one rule set, the point of this being that each rule set will cater to a different group of employees. Within each rule set, there are rules which are the individual instructions. Each rule will then have a set of conditions and criteria that will be triggered if and when timesheet data matches. If we click into a rule set here, you'll notice a few things. We have the name, the description, and the rule set period. The rule set period defines how the system will group the timesheets when deciding what rules to trigger. To the right in the grey box is the current period, which tells us what period of timesheets the system is currently grouping together before it's ready to look at the rules. The shift consolidation setting tells the system whether or not and in what circumstance you want to consolidate multiple shifts that are worked within a certain time of each other. The options are consolidate shifts within a certain amount of time of each other, in this case, 30 minutes. Don't consolidate shifts, as in treat each shift separate, or consolidate shifts starting on the same day. If we go back and look at the list of rule sets here, you'll notice a couple of options when you hover over. You can edit the rules. This will take you into the list of rules currently set up within that rule set. You can test the rules, which will allow you to enter timesheet data in order to test how the rules apply according to different timesheet information. We'll take a look at the edit rules page first. And there are a few things happening here. To the right, we have the rule sets button, which will take you back to the previous page. You have the test rules button, which will take you to the rules tester. And we'll take a look at that shortly. Then you have the activate draft rules button. These are rules that have been added or edited, but not yet activated. This means that you can use the rule tester in order to test them. However, until they are activated, these rules will not be triggered in pay runs when timesheets are imported. This will be greyed out, like this example, if there are no draft rules. The reorder button will allow you to change the order of the rules. This is important because you'll need to check the placement of the rules in relation to other rules. This is because rules are applied in order from top to bottom, so a rule that's triggered may be overridden by another rule further down the list. The Expand All button opens up all the rules at once. You can also add another rule from this button here. Once you click on an individual rule, it will expand to show you the conditions and criteria that are in place. For example, this rule, topping up to 38 hours, says that when an employee works in a week and those timesheet submitted hours are less than 38 hours, then the system is to add time to make up the remaining hours up to 38 hours, applying the pay category of annualised salary. You could disable a rule by selecting the disabled option. If disabled, it will not trigger in the rules tester or the pay run. We can take a look at creating rules now. Once you begin adding a rule, you need to enter the name of the rule, which in this case will be an automatic break rule. You'll then need to work through a variety of conditions in order to achieve what you need. In this case, we're going to say when time worked in a shift is greater than five hours, then apply shift break of 30 minutes. And we're going to say to keep doing that for every five hours worked. You can set a limit if you'd like, and this will enforce a limit of breaks for the day. I'm going to select no limit. This toggle here will allow you to add extra conditions in this top section here if needed. 
Rules can be fairly complicated, so there are quite a few support articles and help videos that go into much more detail regarding rules. You click save once finished. Once you've created your rule, you'll need to check the placement of it in relation to the other rules, remembering that rules are applied in order from top to bottom. So a rule that's triggered may be overridden by another rule further down the list. In the case of the automatic break, it doesn't really matter where I've got it in the system as nothing above or below will affect it. Once you add the custom rule, as we've done here for the automatic break, you'll be able to differentiate between the award and non-award rules because you can see the custom tag against the automatic break one that we've just added, which sits outside of the award. There are some differences in how rule sets work when it comes to awards. The only time you'll need to add a rule to an award rule set is if you wish to cover any pay conditions that are not covered within the award. When you install the award, this already ensures that the correct rules exist in order to pay the employee or the pay conditions that they are entitled to under the award. You can then check what's happening for each shift by using the rules tester. Once you select the timesheet period, you can choose to manually enter the shifts or import a specific employee's time shifts. If you're wanting to import a specific employee's time shift, just select on the import, select the week ending and the employee in question. I'm just going to manually enter the details today to check to see if that automatic break rule is going to work. So we'll do a 7 a.m. start and a 3 p.m. finish. You can also choose to use the draft or active rules and cost the shifts using either a pay rate template or to simulate the costings using an actual employee. Select the employment type in question and click run test. The results will be shown here. As you can see, I've only entered one timesheet. Therefore, there's just the one day for the results. Click into this here and you'll see this is our rule here, the 30 minutes break that's been added. This also indicates other rules that were in place remembering the rule that adds the hours up to the employee's standard week of 38 hours. If you hover over the question mark here, this will confirm what rules have been added for that day. You can also click into the rules tab here and that will go through each rule and it will have a tick for the ones that have applied or not. Once you have tested the rule and are happy with the outcome using this rules tester, you can go back to the edit rules button and you can activate any rules that you are wanting to apply to a pay run. Remembering these rules will not apply unless the employee is actually attached to that rule set. You can do this on their employee file, pay run defaults page. This is the basics of the rules page. I hope this has been helpful.